Howdy. Welcome to another conversation on Frontlines to Frontiers. My name is Case Copeland with Divergence Academy, and today we are joined by Mayan Kankaraju. Welcome back. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Thank you. All right. Now, just for those who might have missed the first conversation, give us a little introduction on yourself. Gotcha. So I am the program manager for um, the admissions team. Okay. So what we do is effectively bring the students in, make sure that they're ready to go, and um, effectively, as cheesy as this may sound, accomplish their dreams, make their dreams happen. That is a little cheesy, but it's awesome because I yeah. know you mean it. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I always laugh because I enjoy our conversation yeah. is, uh, you know, you have such this uh, th this positivity it just just radiates sometimes. So I'm like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I need to go talk to my uncle and you know, just get in a better mood. Yeah. But it's really important. I, I think that 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 is so beneficial to people who are getting started, especially that we know so many of the the students at our school, uh, they're they're in some sort of transition. So anxiety anxieties are high. Uh, they're dealing with lots of challenges. So I imagine having this uh, this optimism, this this kind of really positive voice accomplishes a lot. It helps them take a breath and feel a little bit more at ease. You know, I always hope so. And I've heard that from some <laughs> folks. So I, I think I'm doing a good job, at least well enough. You've heard so, it. You just don't believe it? Absolutely. You know, there's always such a little bit. That, like, m me, myself, mm -hmm. I think I go through a little bit of imposter syndrome too. So. Well, we all do. And, and that's a yeah. topic we're definitely going to get back to in a second. So with that idea of the imposter syndrome, let's just generally say that we recognize the students searching for whatever program. We know there's lots of schools out there. There's lots of different pathways. So people are trying to figure out how do I get started? You know, they've got all those very heavy questions. What's it like talking with them in their first conversation when they're almost like hesitant? They don't know, they don't even know what to ask. So what is it like on those early conversations? I think for many of these students, like they're they're finding out about IT for the very first time. Mm -hmm. I think I said that last time too, but it's, it's still very true, right? These guys, you know, the, but when it comes to IT, there's this kind of almost fear in the air of, oh my gosh, you know, computing is, is taking over. Mm -hmm. And it's either, I really don't want to do that, or it's, you know, I really need to join this, but how do I do it, mm -hmm. right? So it's almost like battling with, and there are two sides. It's either they're really terrified of the prospect of whether it's AI taking over, or, you know, this XYZ, this right. alien is coming to earth and, you know, taking over all of our systems, or it's, you know, I don't know anything about this. How do I get more involved? Because yeah. they all they all carry with them some sort of input from the messaging, whether it's it's social media messages, whatever they read, they don't know what they don't know yet, so they're really kind of restricted to whatever is just being broadcast in front of them. Yeah. And some of those headlines can be a little scary, can be very overwhelming. So getting back to that imposter syndrome, I imagine the conversation you have with a lot of people are like, oh, I've, I, I don't have any experience. I, I don't even know if I should be here. I don't know if I can even do this because don't you have to know all these things to get started, what do you do to ease that anxiety? I think that's maybe 50% of my conversations. That many? That many of just folks where they, they feel like, I don't know anything, how can I do this? Like, is it even possible for me, given that I don't have an IT background, I don't know anything about computers, some of them don't even really know the acronym IT. You know, that's new for them, right? So they're, they're already trying to like disqualify themselves before they've even gotten started. Before they, I would have barely even said a couple of words. <laughs> you know, sometimes, wow. seriously. But I think the biggest thing for them is just easing them a little mm -hmm. bit in just saying, and this is true, with, with going through divergence, or, or really any other school, but going through divergence in this case, um, and getting certifications like with CompTIA or like with Fortinet, you know, these certifications can help you get there. Mm -hmm. And that's not just, that's not just silly talk. Like I've seen folks who've gotten a security plus cert and who've ended up finding that position who've known nothing. Like these guys are coming in from being, from being teachers or being dentists or being, you know, construction workers. Mm -hmm. And they come in and, and they do genuinely get those certifications. And I think it's so easy to kind of lose sight of that sometimes of just saying, hey, look, you know, these jobs are, they're still in, they're still very much in demand despite some of the things that you may hear. And right. so it's a great time to join. Okay, so we've got a couple of possible, you know, you know tangents off, off yeah. of that. But before we, we jump to, again, the certs, the content, uh, those yeah. success stories, do you remember the movie Ratatouille? I do. Okay, uh, so one of the, the big, the big uh, uh, themes or the big story behind it is it's the anyone can cook mm -hmm. concept. And I like that for our students because whether they are pivoting out of a different career, but they've got some professional experience, whatever the career pathway they were on, but we also have those novices who just came out of the military. Uh, they're still very young. They don't have any professional experience to pivot out of. They're just trying to transition in. So regardless of that, I like the concept of the anyone can cook. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't have to have a certain pedigree or certain uh, uh, leverage point to get in. You can get in. 
And you know, so what is what is your kind of fun messaging when you need to remind people? How do you tell them? You're fine. You're fine. You can get in. You can do this. What What do you tell? Them? Well, guys, honestly, I think first of all, I think I need to borrow that. Okay. That anyone can cook. Yeah. <laughs> like absolute. There's no question of that. I get credit for it whenever you you say it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the biggest thing I tell them is just you know um, these certifications can help you get there. Mm-hmm. The more that you stack them on, like in CompTIA, the way the certifications work is if you get a Security Plus and a Network Plus and a Pen Test Plus. You get a title that you can then put on your resume, put on your LinkedIn, mm-hmm. and that stands out. And the more of these you stack on, because honestly, even if you get the Security Plus, well, that's amazing, and you can get a job just with that. But if you tack on Network Plus and Pen Test Plus with that, well, that's an additional um, achievement that you can then take to employers, and they'll look at that and say, hey, you know, this guy, he really knows his stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, So that's, that's huge. And so going back to <laughs> anyone can cook for yeah. a second, because I, I love that, I think it's almost... That's more true now than ever Mm -hmm. with the rise of AI, with everything happening. It's so easy to say, hey, you know, with everything happening and going on, you don't even have to work in IT. You don't even have to work in computers. The bots are just going to do everything for you. But, you know, there's something that I I learned about recently, which is called G1's paradox, which sounds really, really fancy. I'm excited. But it's it's this idea of the more that automation is going to take on, Mm -hmm. the more work we're actually going to need. So, yes, maybe we're going to be able to automate X, Y, Z. We're going to automate um, maybe going forward, you, um, the, if you're writing an article, maybe AI will be able to take care of that. Mm-hmm. But there will be a more difficult task that AI won't be able to do that then all of a sudden, hey, you know, you'll still need a person to get that going. Yeah, generally, I, I think that's the conversation uh, when they talk about, you know, with automation, with every uh, technological advancement. It's not the job replacement. It's the job uh, switching or, you know, where, where roles aren't just lost. It just moves on to a different type of role. Mm-hmm. So it's it's being ready. You know, it's it's the concept of you know don't get ready, stay ready. Yeah. You know, so if you are already in motion, you, you're already you've already learned something. You don't know what that next opportunity, what that next tool, what that next technology is going to be. But as long as you are enabled to you know t- to act on it whenever that door does open, and that's the exciting part. Which of course still points back to the people who are deciding: Can I do this? Should I do this? It's at some point, it's like you have to jump in the pool. Mm-hmm. You just got to jump in and start start trying. And that's tough and it's scary. But you brought up search twice now. So right. let's get back to that conversation. Sure. Because with the new tooling, the new technology, and of course we have our new programs. So the new is always exciting. Right. But the certain things that aren't going away. So right. even though like the AI, I mean, right. the, there's so many fun, new, exciting, sexy things to talk about. Right. There are certain things that aren't going anywhere. Right. So if you need to get started... What are some of those certs that have that staying power, that there's still jobs available if you need to get in? You know, there's this sentiment out there that all of a sudden, with everything moving to the cloud, you don't need networking. And I I think, honestly, um, I think it's a bunch of crock, <laughs> to be impolite. But <laughs> Language, <it's true>. mister. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's true in that, you know, with networking, with everything happening with AI, mm-hmm. you know, we you need to run that through networks, mm-hmm. right? Even in the cloud, everything moving to the cloud. Well, you still have to run all of that on physical networks. Mm-hmm. So that's not going anywhere. So if you see what's happening now with Cisco and with Fortinet, these are certifications that people can get that, you know, these are li- these are networking certs. These are network engineering mm-hmm. certs. But you're literally helping AI systems. You're helping cloud systems function by doing that. And also, with all of these needs, we need to build more networking. And there are new legislation. There's new things coming out from the federal government and from other agencies. But now you're mandated to actually build these networks and infrastructure in the United States. Mm-hmm. So if you want to build jobs back, well, we got to bring the jobs of the 21st century back to the U.S. Right. And so there's going to have to be local networks, local systems, uh, you know, the the whole on-prem versus cloud. I know that's been a fun conversation for years, for generations now, as the pendulum has gone both directions. But it's one of those things that, especially with AI, uh, the big topic of conversation around it is, uh, you know, of course, energy. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's very expensive if you're going to be doing all of that work in the cloud. So there has to be some level of local network that's necessary. So it's not going anywhere. Right. Even though there are exciting certifications and exciting new jobs and new roles, there are certain things that aren't going anywhere. And if you're trying to get a first job, these are the places where you got to start. Right. So there's the the Net Plus, of course, Security Plus. A lot of those, mm-hmm. just get it. Right. And it's it's that thing because I, I know I would love to hear your your feedback on some of the misconceptions, the the false truths mm-hmm. that people come in with because again they're they're restricted to whatever headlines they've been reading. Uh, so that idea of 
<clears throat> excuse me, that idea of this certification is going to get me a job. Mm -hmm. We always, always have to correct that really early on. A certification doesn't get you a job, but a certification does get you to the interview table. Right. So it's, it's that there's a gamemanship in certs, and you and I were talking about gamification. Right. So clearly, the, the, the whole ecosystem of all the certs, all the credentialing, there's a game to it. Mm -hmm. And especially if you are a, a, a person with a lot of IT experience, you've been around for, for a couple of generations now, you might have different opinions. We've heard from our instructors their opinions. Oh, I don't have any certs. I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, especially if you're trying to get started, you've got to play the game. Yeah. And part of that uh, that badging, that credentialing, gets you a seat at the table because they the employer audience they at least know that you know how to learn. They at least know that you had to do, accomplish some things just to get here. And I think that's the value of those early certifications. You've got to do something to get yourself to the table. Right. Sorry, I rambled. That was a little bit of a monologue. <laughs> what What are your thoughts on that? The the early certs, the 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 value of those first certifications. Well, I think you're absolutely correct that there's been a gamification in society mm -hmm. by large. I think both with the rise of social media and different things. In the matrix, but, you mean? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> 100%. But also, I think, you know, that I almost think of it just for, for my own kind of understanding, almost an Xboxification. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like getting, because I'm a gamer, I, it's like Xbox Live achievements. You're getting all of these achievements as you're playing a game. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing whether you're learning cybersecurity, you're learning networking. You want to make sure you're getting more of those so you honestly you look cooler on the leaderboard, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it's looking on with the employers as well. Mm -hmm. For them, there's been a gamification in their mindset even. They want to see you getting those stackable certifications. They want to see, you know, you succeed more and it's a tangible way to see it. And as we're, you know, spending more time on these, you know, glass screens and different things, you're, you're checking LinkedIn. And so when mm -hmm. you're seeing folks constantly, you know, posting their badges and their credentials, that goes a long way. So there is, I think there is truth to the idea of credentials leading to careers. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. But you're absolutely right. I mean, you have to get to that, that hiring table, get to that interview table. That's huge. And um, certainly it's also getting those professional development skills, making sure that you can interview well and, and those things. Of course, that's important, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's kind of, it's that balance really. And I think that's what we do really well at Divergence generally is that kind of marrying almost between expert instruction and you know professional development and career right. development. So one of the conversations that we've had a lot is trying to not ever create the, the idea or trying not to be a cert mill. Mm -hmm. Because we don't ever want to create the notion that, hey, this is just an education transaction. Right. You're going to get a certification. High five. Good luck to you. Right. Because, again, it's about not just dispelling those myths, but in enabling the individual, the learner, to be able to move forward. And you can't just say, here's a cert. All your problems are solved. There's still so much to it, uh, which is why I want to go back to that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. that never really goes away. Right. There's the imposter syndrome as they're just trying to get started. Uh, but there's that imposter syndrome as we're trying to get them to take their first test. Right. Uh, we, of course, embed, you know, there's a voucher budget, so every single student has has funds ready to choose the certifications they're going to take. Uh, right. All of our programs have a lot of different options as far as the direction they want to go. But sometimes we're like, just take a test. Like, there's <laughs> plenty of budget. You may pass, you may not, and that's okay, but you just got got to go take the <laughs> test. Like, please, register, get it on the calendar. Uh, what... What have you seen? What's what's really I guess, fun or interesting or encouraging is you're seeing people kind of kick the ball around mm -hmm. and hesitating before they take that first cert. Yeah, I think honestly getting the getting folks to take that attempt, mm -hmm. that's something that's honestly one of the most important things. And I commend our student success advisors, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to them for, for doing Shout that. Out. Seriously. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. But once you get that certification, mm -hmm. once you get that first one, I think there's almost an itch. I think you get excited, mm -hmm. especially if you're going out there, you're putting it on LinkedIn, putting it on your resume. Then there's that itch of, oh, I can get that stack. I can get that Network Plus next. I can get that Linux Plus next. Like you want to, you really mm -hmm. want to try for it. And I, I've seen folks get that itch and do really, really well and actually get those positions just based on, yes, they got that first cert, but all of a sudden there's this almost like that dopamine hit when you get that. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to stack more. Right. Well, and you already mentioned earlier uh, the, the, the vendors. Mm -hmm who have created this game for us, yes. right? <laughs> they know how it works, so they've also set up these uh, mid-layers where you can be strategic about which certifications you get that are stackable. And if you get that package, that bundle, you get an extra title, you get the, these extra you know, uh, marks on your avatar, mm -hmm. if you will, as you're leveling up. And those are really exciting things to mm -hmm. be able to talk about. Right. There are also layers that will set you apart. If you're in a stack of 500 people, mm -hmm. you need something that's gonna set you apart. So even though that, yeah, there's a game to it, 
if you know how to play the game, it gives you a better opportunity, mm -hmm. which is the biggest challenge for all of our learners who are novices. They're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. I'm, I'm ready to work. Just give me a chance. It's the, mm -hmm. put me in, coach, please. Somebody <laughs> give me a chance. Uh, so those little dopamine hits, like getting a cert, are, are encouraging because mm -hmm. it's still very much an uphill climb. Yeah. The, in, in a lot of senses, of course, the schooling part is the easy part. Yeah. You know, even though it's very difficult, that's still only like the early phases of the battle. You still have to get a job. Mm -hmm. All right. So anything more on the imposter syndrome? <laughs> anything interesting on there? On, on the imposter syndrome itself, I think, well, I mean, the most important thing is really just to, honestly, it's, it's for all of us, it's to keep going. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that is the toughest thing in general. And um, I think that's the, the biggest challenge sometimes it right now is, we are so, in some ways, and this might be a tangent in itself, but we are so consumed in some ways by just, um, maybe we're consumed by whether it's social media or we're consumed by certain mm -hmm. things, or we don't want to look this certain way, or we, we don't think we can look that way because that's not us, right? So in that way, that's actually a big shift that maybe I don't, I don't think about enough, is we're actually asking folks to almost, it's an identity shift too, mm -hmm. you know? It's like saying, and I, I remember actually there's a, there's a person I know really well who, you know, he was a pastor in the military. And I think I think he still does that, um, a bit of that. But he ended up getting a good job in, in cloud engineering and cyber, doing that work, right? So, but for him, it was a big ask when he joined Divergence. Mm -hmm. And he did, he did really well. But it's coming in and saying, hey, you know, like this is a 180 shift and he's doing well because of it. But that's a big challenge too, is, is saying, why is that identity shift worth it, almost? And it's not that you have to give up all parts of yourself, like that no, makes you whole. Because it's not about leaving everything behind, right. it's about adding on new layers to who you are. It's, it's uh, you know, the, the metaphor of you just keep adding on, adding on, it's it's an avatar character. Mm -hmm. But there is an element of, of kind of checking your ego at the door. You have to set some stuff down and say, okay, I'm willing to be humble, because right. there's so much that I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's really tough, so mm -hmm. for, so we're looking at wrapping up the conversation, right. no immediate rush, but let's, let's think about messaging to those people who are mm -hmm. thinking about getting started. It's tough. Yeah. You know, it, you have to go through those layers of, I don't even know if I can do this, but once mm -hmm. you get across that threshold, it's the, okay, how do I actually get started? Right. Uh, and so we could talk about first conversations, mm -hmm. how do you reach out? Um, of course, the funding mechanisms, the things that actually make the training available to a lot of people. What are the important things we need to let people know who have, they cross the threshold, they're like, okay, I want to get started, I'm ready. <laughs> it's like j jumping off a diving board. Yeah. What, what's important in those first conversations that we need to let them know about? Well, sure, I, I would say that the most important thing is just knowing that the instructors at Divergence Academy are all people who are coming in from the industry, mm -hmm. right? These are not folks who are only teaching at Divergence and that's all they do. They are people who are taking time out of their schedules to come in and teach and to show kind of, and to demonstrate what they're actually doing genuinely in the industry. And kind of going back a little bit to to why now, why now is a good time? Because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of anxiety in the system at this moment mm -hmm. with everything happening, whether it's the economy, whether it's AI, there's a lot of anxiety. So I'd say the reason why now is because this stuff isn't going away, right? If you want to invest in something, you know, we talk about investing in gold because gold is never going mm -hmm. away. That's something that you can secure. It's kind of, it's similar, right? Networking, cloud, AI, these things are the future. They, these are the future and these are going to continue to be the building blocks of really our society. Right, so getting by, if you get in now, if you join now, it's, a, it's really an opportunity to, to make your mark at a time where maybe some people are discouraged, maybe some people are not coming in right now for that same reason. But if you decide to take that leap, mm -hmm. then it's an opportunity of, of, uh, of joining at a time when, when it's not just needed, but that you can really make a big mark because you're joining early. Right, joining early and there's a financial commitment. I, yeah. I know that's scary, I know right. that's overwhelming. Uh, but sometimes that's what's necessary. You have to invest in yourself a little bit just to get going. Yep. And I, most of us have been in those job transition times. I've been there. I know it's very hard to to you know convince yourself take out that 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 yep. financial loan or whatever those those needs are. Yep. It's hard to do. But in order to make yourself available for that future opportunity, you've got to be in the game. Yep. You, you just have to, and that that's really tough. Uh, we could talk about some of the financial opportunities. The not an uh, opportunity from a salary perspective, but like financial aid. Mm -hmm. So we know that a lot of our students are out of the military, right. so we do take the GI Bill. Right. But there are so many sources of, of funding opportunities. Mm -hmm. If you're out of the military, uh, obviously, as an institution, we have those scholarships available. Mm -hmm. um, but 
there are so many mechanisms to get yourself in the game. Don't let that be an obstacle. Right. You know, sometimes again, very overall, I've been there. I've been in that that transition, but it's it's so important just to get yourself in the game. If not, it's kind of like uh, the uh, uh, retirement investing metaphor. Yeah. You know, we can all be frustrated, like, oh, I should have started investing five years ago and mm -hmm. I never did. Well, the only thing worse than that is waiting another five years and having the same reflection. Right. At some point, you're going to have to buy in and, and do it to move yourself forward. Right. Sorry, another monologue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else you want to contribute on the, on those layers about getting yourself in the game and what financing financing uh, makes it available? Sure. So I mean, at Divergence, it's really all about um, if you're coming in, you know, outside of military funding, outside mm -hmm. of VA funding, then we do uh, meritize. It's almost like a traditional student loan option. Um, we also take a firm, so that's going to be more of a, a plan where you can actually split the payments, make it easier on yourself. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that is a great option that we just made available this year that I'm really, really happy that we have available because all of a sudden now it's, it's more bite-sized, it's easier to manage. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's a great way to, to bring more folks in at a time when it really is needed. Well, and I'm sure since you're, again, the first voice that most of these uh, incoming students talk to, uh, that's an anxiety level. You just have to help them deal with. It's like, yeah. yep, I get it. I know it's tough. We all know it's tough because uh, we never want to be unsympathetic to the, the challenges that they have to go through. But the key is you got to get yourself in the game. You got to you got to be ready when that opportunity hits. Absolutely. All right. Any other great wisdom before we, we wrap up this talk? <laughs> if anybody here is interested, 832 Diverge, you can give us a call. Um, and also we have the application form online, so it's pretty easy to do. And I'm excited to, to talk to more folks. All right. And when they call, ask for? Mayank. <laughs> Got it. Appreciate it, man. Right. Appreciate thank the time. You, and thank you all for joining. Appreciate the uh, conversations on Frontlines to Frontiers. Cheers. Cheers.